everyone, my name is Samuel Cardillo and welcome for this 4th edition of Polymer Lessons. I know you've been waiting long for it, so here it is. And today, we're going to talk about Polymer Awesome Kit, which is based on Polymer Starter Kit and allows you to write your code in CoffeeScript, JAD and SAS. The Polymer Awesome Kit is a project that I initiated in order to give an example of how to use these technologies with Polymer. And I'm sure that right now, you're really intrigued by this and you really want to see it. So let's go and check it out. We are going to start by cloning the Git repository of Polymer Awesome Kit. Now that we have it, we're just going to enter the repository and then proceed exactly like the Polymer Starter Kit by writing bore install and npm install in order to install every dependencies that the kit needs. Now that the huge process of downloading and installing is done, you can write gulp serve in order to start using the Polymer Awesome Kit. And as you can see, it's completely looking like the Polymer Starter Kit because the whole code is based on it. What is cool about the Polymer Awesome Kit is that you can use CoffeeScript, JAD and SAS without losing the basis that you've learned about Polymer. But let's check it out and let's see how the Polymer Awesome Kit is really made of. As I previously said, the Polymer Awesome Kit is based on the Polymer Starter Kit. So if you've seen one of my old podcasts concerning the Polymer Starter Kit, you will probably recognize the architectures of the files. If you've not seen it, I recommend you to go and watch it. You will have a better understanding of what is going on in the video. The first thing we want to do is go in App. App contains the basic files of our application. Now we have an index.html and index.jade. The index.html is what is used by Gulp in order to show you the website. Now what we are interested in is index.jade. Whatever modification you're doing in this file will be directly compiling that .html and you will see directly the change here. So let's change the element welcome, for example. We can see that the element my greeting is called here. So we go in element, my greeting, and in each element you have a dot coffee, a dot jad, and a dot scss. The scss is sas file. The dot jad is the html file. And the dot coffee is what contains the JavaScript. Now we wanted to change welcome to something else. So let's change welcome to hello. And the browser automatically refreshed and gave us the result. The code is directly compiled and displayed through Google. The only part that are not in coffee or JAD or SAS are elements.html, routing.html, and app.js. There is also the basic styles as app team, main, and shared styles that are not in any JAD or coffee or SCSS format. Now, let's say you finish the application and you want to put it in production. It's really simple. Here we have a file called dist. This contains for the moment two folders. We're going back to the terminal, pressing Ctrl C in order to stop the GUL processing, and we're going to write GUL. Gulp have now cleaned the whole repertory, and as we can see, there is no more index.html. Also, the dist folder is now fully completed by the project, and the project has been vulcanized and minified completely. The index.html as well, and app.js as well. As you've seen, the Polymer Awesome Kit is really similar to the Polymer Starter Kit, because it's completely based on it. But I'm sure that right now you have one question, how to make modifications on it? And that's exactly what we're going to check out right now. So let's get our hands on. First, we're going to write gulp serve in order to relaunch the gulp process. And now let's have a look in the contact section. It will be great to have a field here where I can write something with a button. And when I click on the button, I have a message telling me that the message has been sent. Let's do that together. We go back on our text editor and I'm going to go on index.jade as the contact section is managed here. I'm going to replace P by paper input and add a label saying your message. 
three dot. Now I don't have my paper input appearing. Why? Because I have to go in elements, elements.html and add the paper input into the integrated elements. Now that I've done that, I just have to see the result. Now we need a button. In order to put the button, I just do paper button and I write send. Now the paper button is like the paper input. It's not displaying well. So let's go back in elements.html and add paper button. And now I have my paper input and my paper button. But I want them to be next to each other. How to do that? Let's go back in the code and let's go in index.html. Let's create a new div that will be contact box. The dot in front of contact box mean that this will be a div with the class contact box. And now I'm just indenting the paper input and paper button in order to become a child of contact box. I'm now going in styles, app team, and we'll put here contact box at apply layout horizontal great but i want them to take the whole box how to do that let's go back to the code and go in index.jade and write dot space next to paper input in order to give to paper input the class space which is if you go in app team applying flex on everything in that class now save index.jad, go back in your project and you have the box. Now it's still missing the action when I click on send. Let's do that together. I go back on the paper button and put a bracket and say on tap underscore send message. I save it, go in scripts app.js which manage the template of index.jad and here let's write app underscore send message is equal function and in this function, we want to display a toast. Now, the toast exists is here, and it have the ID toast. So we just need to select it by saying app dot dot rs dot toast dot text is equal to your message has been sent. And then we want to show it. Same, we select it with app dot dot rs dot toast dot show and this is a function so we open a close brackets and semicolon now let's refresh the project and let's see okay it works and this is the end of polymer lessons number four from now on you will have way more podcasts to check out and we still have a long road to go together in the next podcast we'll build a better application with polymer awesome kit we'll also build an element and we will publish it on customelements.io. We will also go through new tutorials for neon animations and neon elements. If you have any suggestions or feedbacks about the video, please comment and feel free to contact me on any social networks. Also, don't forget to subscribe, to give a thumbs up, and see you in the next time.